The command line is available in a default installation of our Macintosh computer and is available when you purchase your computer. It's also considered a shell, or in the Mac, it's called a terminal. You should be careful when using this application because it's possible to make a mistake and render part of your computer inoperable, and it is also possible to change system files. To open a command line or the shell terminal in a Mac, there's a couple of ways of doing that. One, I can come over to my dock, which in this case I have it on my left side, and I can open the Finder application, navigate to Applications, and size down and look for the Utilities folder. If I double click the Utilities folder, I can see I've got a terminal here. Now I can launch it right here by double clicking. I can lock my left mouse down and I can drag it over to my dock and store it on my dock for quick ready. I can put it on my desktop if I want to. Or the way I like to launch the terminal is optionally just through the search button or spotlight and type terminal. As soon as I do that, hit return, I've got a terminal window up. Let's size up our terminal window so we maximize the view. Now I'm gonna run through a few commands that'll help you as a primer learn how to work with a terminal. The terminal, we can navigate, we can open up the shell application or terminal just as we just did. We can navigate, we can list directory contents, we can work as the super user or what we call sudo or super user do. And we can create directories and files and things like that. So working with the terminal to navigate, and currently I am sitting now at my home directory, I can navigate using CD. The CD command allows me to set a directory to whatever directory level I want. I can move up or I can move down through the directory structure. If I want to move up, CD dot dot will move me up one level in the directory structure, or dot dot slash dot dot will move me up two levels in the directory structure. If I want to simply navigate down, I could call CD and say download. And I would be at my downloads directory indicated here by the downloads right here. Now I'm actually in the downloads directory here. If I want to navigate back up to my home directory or the one that's under Daryl, cd dot dot will back up and now I can see the tilde, which represents the home directory. And if I would like to list the contents of a directory, I can use a command called ls and I can put various different switches, what's called switches at the end of it. If I just call ls and execute, I'll see the directory structure. Those are the directories that are available to me. And I can navigate down into any one of these, as I just did with downloads. If I want to list the contents of the directory with a little bit more useful information for me, I can use the ls-lh command, which lists the directories, shows me the permissions, shows me who owns those files or directories, what group settings are there, and gives me a human readable output for the byte size. So if I execute this, I can see that I've got a directory structure that contains all of these other directories. Directories are denoted, by the way, in the permission list column here with a D. So all of these are directories. And what you see here are the permission settings for each one of these directories. You'll see RWX and maybe RWX for the next three dashes, and then maybe RWX for the final three dashes. What that means is read, write, and execute. The first three indicate what are the permission settings for the owner, in this case me, of the directory. The next three, and because they are blank dashes, are the permission settings for the group, in this case staff. And then the final three dashes are the permission settings for a guest user, assuming we have a guest user enabled in our operating system. So as we go through our lessons, we'll talk about setting permission settings to a certain permission setting for certain files in the MAMP server. Let's navigate down into downloads. CD, downloads, and then I hit return. Now I'm in the downloads directory and I can list the contents of that directory, ls-lh. 
and I can see that I have Dropbox installer DMG and I've got a software application that's an Office application. If I want to go back to my root, I can type cd dot dot back to my root or home directory, or I could just simply type a tilde and hit return and I'll be back at my home directory. Now occasionally, I might want to clear it just to clear it all out and not have to look at so much information. I can do so with the clear command, C-L-E-A-R, return, and it clears my screen up. Now, occasionally, I will have to execute commands as what's called a super user, or sudo. A super user gives me what's called root privileges, which means I can create directories and I can assign privileges. I can install software, pretty much anything I want to do. In order to create a super user, you will type sudo, super user do, su dash, and return, and you will be prompted for your login password. Now, if you're working on your own Mac computer, your own login password should suffice as super user. So I'll type my login password. Now, as you can see, I'm at the root user. Root, shown here, and I'm at the root user directory or the root user home directory. 